When it comes to homegrown violent extremism, or HVE, there are th certain things that we know to be true. We know that HVE affects people and places all over the world. There's no area immune to the shadow of this growing threat. It is the new norm. Terrorism is the new norm. You've got to get to the facts as quickly as you can, and that's, not, that's sometimes not very easy at all. In fact, uh, for many events that I've been involved with, you, you usually have to wait to about version four, I think, before you get the, the true story of what's going on. What has changed in, in, in Paris, it, doesn't, it hasn't changed the fact that Parisians are still going out. Uh, they still do. It's a, it's a statement that they do. They are saying they are not afraid. They keep on, they keep on living the, the way they had. The, th the thing that has changed is first, I think, the awareness that the danger can be everywhere. The ongoing impact is the change in how you have to then secure your city and the additional costs that that brings. We took those steps because we needed to help the community understand that the city was in charge. How far do we go to have security, so to, to give the police forces the means to inquire, to arrest people, to check the movement of people, because we were considering that being free without security doesn't make any sense either. I would say what concerns me now is a coordinated low-tech attack. A coordinated attack where you've got several individuals with several targets commandeering vehicles and deciding that they're going to act. Homegrown terrorists either come from ethnic or religious backgrounds. How do you develop better relationships so that you know what's out there, you know what you're dealing with? What you don't want to do is give a community the sense that they are seen as a threat and therefore alienated from the broader community at large. I think it's a matter of having a society that understands that the safety and security begins with us We've lived with a 911 mentality in this country for a long time and gotten away with it. When an attack happens now, um, it, we're saturated with it for about 24 to 48 hours, and then unfortunately it seems to just go away. We get really good at understanding and knowing the names of the assailants, not the names of the victims. But the risk of sounding, you know, excessively um, sort of macabre in a way. I think, you know, if we look at the, the list of the leading causes of death and threats to, you know, human health and safety in our countries, terrorism will rank pretty low. I think we can leave the room feeling that we are more safe, we are more secure, given the fact that we've reduced the risk and we've reduced their capacity, and we've been quite successful. We need to make sure that we respect one another, that we have good dialogue, and that we, I think, promote uh, the opposite of what terrorism is about.